Hi, I'm Danelle. This is the face behind Australian audiobooks. Thank you so much. I'd like to start by saying uh, my channel has exploded in the last month. I've got heaps of new viewers. So if you're new here, hello. If you've stuck around since before the before times when I recorded one single book and then went silent for five years, thank you for sticking with me. I've been pretty consistent um, uploading the rest of the books. It's all because of lockdown. I needed something to do. This is my lockdown project, which I've continued. Which, hey, it's going pretty well, if I don't mind saying so myself. So I thought to celebrate slash thank you guys uh, for subscribing and for reaching 3,000 subscribers. I thought I would record a little Q&A because sometimes you guys ask questions in the comments that I don't answer. <laughs> or many people ask the same questions, which I don't answer. So here we go. All right, first from Gabriella A. Where do you think John Flanagan got inspiration for the Rangers Apprentice slash Brother Band series? This is an interesting question and something that I've thought about a lot. So John Flanagan is an Australian author and I definitely think that he's taken a lot of inspiration from Australia and made something that is uniquely Australian while still being grounded deeply in Europe mythology. So I was driving up to Gympie maybe six months ago if you're from Brisbane, you may know Gympie is about two hours north. And as I was driving through there, I noticed an Araluan street. I was like, wow, I wonder if that's where John Flanagan got the name for the kingdom of Araluan. But there's also a town in North Queensland called Araluan. I think that authors sort of take inspiration from things around them. But then also, whenever uh, I look at a new region that pops up in the book. I Google the background. This is because when I decided to make the Scandian Scottish, I don't know why I didn't think of this. Obviously they're meant to be Scandinavian. They're seafaring folk. Their name is Scandia. They all have beards and horned helmets. But I'm like, you know what? These people sound Scottish. Let's go with that. Uh, which I now have to stick with for the whole 12 books. So now, um, when a new region comes up, I Google. So Hibernia uh, is based on Ireland. That's the historical name for it. Picta is obviously Scotland. Where do they go during Erex Ransom? Book seven, Erex Ransom. Okay. Arida. Arida is meant to be Spain. But of course, I can't do that kind of accent. So anyway, what was the question? Where did he get inspiration? So <laughs> I think he got inspiration from Australia, especially since he uses uh, metric units of measurement like kilometer and meter, which I really appreciate because I know a lot of my viewers are in the US and are used to miles and feet and all that sort of stuff, but we think of kilometers over here. So that's one source of inspiration. And I think also Europe, ancient Europe. Thanks Gabriella for that question. I think you have another one, but I'm gonna read that at the end, you know, space it out a little bit. So my next question is from Ola P. Do you record every day only one chapter or do you record on one day a few chapters for the next few days? I try to record every day. Um, I'm sure that some of you guys are on to me by now. Yes, sometimes I do schedule a few days in advance. I make a living as a musician, so on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's really hard for me to find time to record. So I will record in advance for the weekend, but most of the time, every afternoon, I'm sitting at my desk doing some recording. And the reason I do that is because I wanna do one chapter every day and keep it really consistent instead of uploading four in one day and then having nothing. So I'm sorry, but that's how I do things. Thank you, Ola. Classic radio lover. Is this my dad? I heard you sing. Can we get you to do more? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I plan to record like a musical version of the song Greybeard Halt. It's on my to-do list. Yes, classic radio lover, you can, uh, you will be hearing me sing more. Also, I do have a music channel if you guys want to go have a look at it. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks for thinking that I'm good. That's very life affirming. Brian Grenke, will you read the Brother Band books after you finish Ranger's Apprentice? 
Yes, I have a content plan. I'm into journaling and I have a books to record spread, which I really need to revamp. It's kind of ugly at the moment, but you can see this as a start of this year, I have ticked off book eight, The Ranger's Apprentice down to book 12. Then I've got the Brother Band Chronicles. Then I've got the Royal Ranger. And then I've got a few other ones that I want to finish as well. Like um, I really love Tamora Pierce. So I want to record her Alana the Lioness Quartet because it's not on Audible. And I love those books so much. I'm gonna do more Alex Ryder books. I've got that on a separate channel because I recorded it as a gift for my boyfriend. So I'll probably record book two at some stage this year. And then there's a few other ones. Actually, I wanna show you this. Um, there are these really cool books by another Australian author called Dave Luckett, uh, Rihanna and the Wild Magic. This is a book that I read when I was growing up. It's quite thin, so it shouldn't take me too long. And I loved it. You just don't see it around. Like he's not a very well-known author, but it's a great story. And then I was at a secondhand bookshop the other day and I saw this, Rihanna and the Dogs of Iron, and I didn't know that he'd written a second book. So I'm gonna record these two. So that is my plan. Yes, I will be doing Brother Band, and yes, I'll be doing Royal Ranger, but I gotta get the first series, the main series finished off first. The Law Explorer. Hello, you have a really cool channel. When did you start reading the Ranger's Apprentice series? So I first read it when I was growing up. I probably only got to book three, and then Later on, maybe I was about 20, um, I was at my friend's house and I saw the whole set on his bookshelf. And I'm like, dude, you gotta let me borrow them. So I borrowed the first four from him, which this is still his copy. <laughs> I hate those people that borrow books and never give them back, but I'm now one of those people. Mitch, if you want your book back, I still have them. So I borrowed them and I, I just, devoured them and I love them so much. So I've gradually acquired the rest of the books through thrift shops. They're actually in reprint at the moment so they're pretty widely avail available at bookshops but I like these covers and these are pretty old as you can tell from the colour of the paper. The answer to that question is once when I was younger and then again as an adult. Okay, Derek Sanft. How long does it take for you to record a chapter? I'm very sorry if I mispronounce your name. Sanft. I'm quite posh for an Australian. How long does it take for you to record a chapter? It depends. Most of the chapters in this series are about 10 pages or less, which is about 20 minutes of reading time. If I stumble over my words, I have to go back and edit it. So normally it takes me about 40 minutes to do a chapter. And then I have to try and mix the audio, which I'm not great at. I don't know if you've noticed. It's not really my wheelhouse, so... Um, if the audio is inconsistent, which I'm sure it is, and I'm sure you've figured it out by now, I'm still learning this stuff. Um, what is your favorite thing about Ranger's Apprentice? Favorite scene storyline? I loved the book, The Siege of Castle Mackendore. I just love that it, it seemed like his writing matured. I loved seeing Will after his apprentice. I know there's some like timeline issues. I think it was a mistake for him to go back and write Irak's Ransom in the past. I didn't find that book very interesting at all, but um, book five was my favorite. Just seeing Will come into his own. I love Malcolm and his bunch of weirdos. I just thought the whole thing was so mysterious. It gave me a bit of a Lockwood vibe. Um, if you haven't read Lockwood and Co by Jonathan Stroud, fantastic series. That book, that storyline, fantastic. Mwah, perfection. I'm really enjoying book nine as well. I think it's cool that they're kind of gallivanting all around the place. Although I think he does waste a lot of time. Like there was a scene where I think it went for about three pages where they're cooking and eating rabbit stew. Was that necessary? No, but it's a great book. <laughs> oh my God, this one, this one made me laugh so much. Samuel Lindell or Lindell, Samuel Lindell. Are you really Australian or do you use a voice changer? Why would I fake being Australian? <laughs> um, I called my channel Australian Audiobooks because I was like, eh, I've got an Australian accent, I can't really hide that. I'm gonna see if Australian Audiobooks is taken. And it wasn't, and I'm like, whoa, there's no way. So that's why I called it that, um, to explain why I speak the way I do. I've got a pretty neutral Australian accent. I enunciate quite a lot more, and often if I'm 
at a gig or working and I meet someone for the first time, they'll ask where I'm from. I think it comes from being a singer where I, I enunciate quite a lot. And also from recording these every day, there's certain things that are really hard to say, like Will nodded. Will nodded. Will nodded. Oh my god. Every time I see the word nodded in these books, it triggers me. It reminds me of a story about Stephen Fry. He recorded all the Harry Potter audiobooks. In the first one, there's a sentence that is, Harry pocketed it. Pocketed it. And he couldn't say it. It took him so many takes. And so he said to JK Rowling, can I just say he put it in his pocket? And she was like, no, you have to record it exactly as written. And then to spite him, in every subsequent book, she put the phrase pocketed it so that he would have to read it. The vindictiveness, but it's like it's friendly vindictiveness. Wait, what was the question? No, I don't use a voice changer or fake my accent. But if, you, if I really wanted to be Australian, I could record it like this. Chapter one, try to eat something, Will. Tomorrow's a big day after all. Jenny, blonde, pretty and cheerful, gestured towards Will's barely touched plate and smiled encouragingly at him. That's like me putting on an Australian accent. This is just how I talk. Okay, next one. Nicholas Pites. Favorite character. I like Malcolm. I like, I think he's cheeky. I think he's fun. I like that he helps people um, and that he looks beyond people's physical imperfections and sees the humanity underneath. I like the voice that I chose for him, so I really enjoy reading his lines. And I'm really excited that he's going to be uh, in book nine. I'm up to, I think, chapter 26. Like, I haven't introduced him yet, and I'm waiting for it. I think it's going to be pretty soon. Favourite character is Malcolm or Malcolm. Rubik's Gaming. I'm guessing you're a gaming channel. I'm going to have to check that out. What is your favourite thing to do besides reading? By the way, you've done an incredible job. Thank you. This year I've gotten into bullet journaling, so I'm actually thinking about doing, like, a journal flip-through video. I, I found a YouTuber called journal with Chloe and she does like book journaling like reading journal and like I'm obviously pretty into that and that got me into journaling it was like a gateway drug thanks I enjoy exercising and running I obviously enjoy playing music because that's what I've decided to make my life uh, and I enjoy travel so 2020 has been great for that but I've sort of been doing a lot of trips within Australia there's some incredible scenery last year we had a long weekend, which is ridiculous because I couldn't go anywhere. So I did a nine hour drive out to a place called Carnarvon Gorge in central Queensland. And it was gorgeous. Um, so yeah, I enjoy playing music, getting out and exercising and seeing things. I love doing nature walks. Thank you. Nightmare Wolf. Once you finish the Ranger's Apprentice series, what will be your next series? Brother Band, I think. Unless you think I should do Royal Ranger first? I think Brother Band is next. Ah, an easy one. David Radloff Licht. I was so scared about saying your name. Hello, thank you for being a long-time supporter of this channel. What made you decide to start reading books on YouTube? Is this how you thought it would turn out? No, not at all. Story time. I started doing it because I actually had vocal fold nodules, which is really bad. Adele had them and had to get surgery. Julie Andrews, the chick from Sound of Music, had them and it ended her career because her surgery was botched. So it's bad, bad news. And then I started doing voice therapy and speech therapy. So I actually started recording these to practice good technique with speaking. So that's why I started doing it. As for how it's turned out, no. I've been recording covers for my YouTube for years and I have struggled to get subscribers. Most videos only get a couple of hundred views. So that's kind of how I thought this would go. I thought, well, you know, I'll put these online and what's the harm? And then I think I put up seven chapters and I checked back and one of the videos had 12,000 views and all these comments saying, when are you going to do more? Like, you got to finish this book, which I thought was crazy. I think I did music covers for about a year and I never had that kind of response. So no, this is not how I thought it would turn out. I'm really glad it did. So thank you for asking. Gabriella A also asked, will you read the Royal Ranger series? I already answered that. So I'm probably going to cut this part out. Sverjan. Sver... Sver... Sverjan. I'm really sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Are you going to read the Brother Band series too? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sending in your questions. I didn't think that I'd talk this long, but I love talking. Thank you again for being part of my channel and enjoying listening. Thank you for 
commenting. I'm just so grateful that this has become something so much bigger than I ever intended it to be. Every morning I check my channel and it just astounds me the amount of love and support that I get from you guys. And it really keeps me going, so thank you. <laughs> it sounds so insincere, but thank you. Alright, I'm gonna go record a couple of chapters because I'm behind. <laughs>